So, had a few requests to do a fly tying video on these streamers that I've been tying. Uh, this is the brown version here. Uh, I have black, brown. I did like a little tan and brown one over here to the left. I'm not sure if I like those ones as much. I like just sticking with a few different color patterns for uh, flies that I tie. It just makes things simpler. This is the gray one here. That's a smaller little one there. And then the, the olive here. So, um... We're gonna get into what we use to tie this fly. First, for the brown, I use this uh, Crystal Chenille Brown in uh, the medium size. These right here, this is just straight brown uh, zonker strips. Today, for this video, I'm gonna I'm gonna tie it with the the Bard, the Black Bard Rabbit. This is used for the 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 back end chenille. This chenille right here is used for the front. This is optional. This is copper crystal flash. You don't have to add this in. Personally, I like streamers with not a lot of flash. Sometimes though, I like throwing this in. We'll, we'll tie it today with this. And then neck or schlappen brown. I like using schlappen because it, I feel like it gives the fly more movement and uh, gives it more bulk so that's what i'm gonna be tying with but neck hackle works as well um, and then for hooks <clears throat> the the trailer hook i use a size eight uh, fire hole stick and for the the front i use size four fire hole stick for the articulation uh, i just have these trout beads i just use these they work great um, for the for the brown pattern i use uh, like this caramel this caramel right here uh, so the other so like black or if olive I, I like using this uh, darker red here and then the cone head bead uh, I'm gonna go with a black one on this one you can do any color I think uh, copper wouldn't look too bad either uh, for some reason though I, I prefer the the black I'm using one fourth inch uh, large cone heads so let's get to it here so I forgot to mention, so what we're going to start out here with is some brown thread. Honestly, the thread probably doesn't matter. You could probably even throw a little hot spot in at the end. Alright, so we're going to start with our size 8. You'll see here, uh, when I tie, I don't get too, too fancy and I don't like doing like over overdoing thread wraps or anything like that is kind of get get the the fly tied and get things done all right so the first thing that you're going to want to grab is some piece of zonker strip here So I get about just a tiny little piece. I don't like too much hanging off the end here, um, even for articulated flies, because sometimes you still get those short strikes. And uh, the closer you have this to the hook, uh, the less that's gonna happen. So I don't like to get too, or have too much of the, the zonker strip hanging off the back. So I'll just usually do like a small little piece like that, that trails off the end. Um, so let's go ahead and tie this in. And again, you're gonna see that I don't over over tie things. I've never had any issues with flies falling apart or anything like that. So I just give this a few good tie or wraps, just enough to hold it in place. A few wraps in front, and then you're just gonna fold this back. Um, that ain't, it's not going to go anywhere with a few tight wraps. Next thing, I'm going to grab the small brown, uh, I can't pronounce, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but vigilated or ventilated, what is it, Ver variegated, variegated chenille, black and brown here. <clears throat> And 
and we're just going to tile the small little part of this in. Just a few wraps there. Then you're going to come up to the the head of the, the hook there. Not all the way up to the top. Leave a little bit of space because we're going to wrap some of that schlopping on there. Cut off the chenille. Done using that. A few more wraps here and just pull some of that chenille back. And then you're going to grab your rabbit zonker. And I don't like getting it too close to the head of the or the eye of the hook, so I'm gonna tie it in about an eighth of an inch back from the eye of the hook. Just make sure you pull back all the rabbit hair there. And give it like three thread wraps. Get my scissors in there, cut it off close, and then really secure down that rabbit strip and I, and I don't get very fancy with the heads of the flies because I mean this is all going to be covered up anyway I don't think the fish is really going to care what that looks like <clears throat> so then we're going to grab a piece of our slop in here and then I just pull down some of the for, for the, the trailer hook uh, end of this fly I use like a smaller piece, one that has like uh, the fibers aren't as long on it. So we're gonna pull down some of this and you can cut off the, the tip end of the, the schloppen feather, but I kind of just lay it on here like this, do a few wraps and then cut off the excess once it's tied in. <clears throat> And another thing I like to do is <clears throat> sometimes these hooks, they, when they're longer, they'll be bending downward as you're, you're tying. So like sometimes your thread wants to pop off. Once I get towards the head of the fly, I'll sometimes just tilt this upward so that this kind of lays uh, straighter and your, your thread doesn't pop off this way. <clears throat> so now I just pull back these feathers or the, the fibers. And again, I don't, I don't get too fancy with it. I feel like the more raggedy it looks, the better. And I give it a good bit of wraps around here until I get down to like the parts where they aren't, the fibers aren't as great. Give it a few wraps to secure it. Cut off the excess. And then I just pull everything back. And really secure it down at this point. So I get all that pulled back this way. And now we can go ahead and whip finish. I just do like four or five turns. Cut off the thread. And uh, now we're gonna add the cement to this. So I just use the, the Loon Outdoors UV clear finish. I get a little toothpick like this, open up the bottle, and the bottle has like a, a brush on it. I just get the toothpick and, and scrape it a little bit off of the, the brush as much as I, I think I'm gonna need. Uh, I've had this bottle for over probably two years for all my flies that I've tied and haven't run out yet. And uh, for streamers, when, when they're kind of open like this, I like kind of glob it in on there, giving it a pretty good amount of UV head cement. Just kind of work it around the, the entire thread wrap there at the, the hook eye. Just make sure you don't get anything in the hook eye. And once you're done with that, uh, I take it out 
I take it off the vise to do that. And then once you're done with that, give it a good shot of UV. I like to let it, the UV hit it for about 20, 30 seconds. So once you get the, the UV uh, head cement to dry a little bit there, um, <clears throat> next we are going to get our cone head and our number four hook. Just go ahead and slip the cone head on there and put this in the vise. Once you have this hook in here, what I do for the articulation is I, I just use 20 pound. I haven't had any issues with that yet. Um, I mean, it's gonna be very covered up and down in there. So, I, I mean, I don't run into any issues with it. Uh, so, 20 pound, grab my bead. So I threw the bead on there. Now we're gonna run the, the trailer, throw the line through the, the hook eye, and then back through the bead. And then when I go to put it on here, I make sure that I have it on the, the far side, or it, it can be close side, far side, but you want it to be on the side of the hook so that when the hook eye for the trailer hook's sitting in there, uh, the, the fly doesn't wanna sit crooked. It'll sit straight up and down. Before we attach the uh, articulated uh, back end, we're gonna throw some lead wire on. I, I usually bring it out to about halfway on the hook here. So we're gonna give it however many wraps it takes to get it to about the midpoint of the hook. Snap it off and go ahead and push down the rest of the lead wire. push it up towards the front and then <clears throat> start your your thread right behind the lead give it a few wraps and cut off the, the tag in there and then I like I don't even worry about uh, securing that lead up there yet I just take my thread to the back of this hook okay and then you're gonna grab your trailer hook and the, the setup that we did before Make sure that the line is straight and attach it to the side. I give it a few wraps and then I, I mess around with it to get it in place. And uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have enough room between the bead and the hook eye back there to give it to allow for some movement. So I'm thinking about right there should be good. Once I get it in place, I wrap all the way up to the lead. And then I I get these two pieces that we're gonna pull back this way. And I kinda just cut them shorter so it's easier to really wrap this down first. So I, I really go, I get like touching thread wraps here, pretty tight all the way back down to the bottom here. And then I come back up once more. And then I pull the top piece to the far side and just give it a few securing wraps on that side and then the bottom piece to the near side. And then I follow both of those about halfway backwards and then I cut them off and then from there, we just tie down the rest of what's left. And I've never had any issues with this going anywhere. <clears throat> so once we get that all secured down, I go back to the end of the fly here. And to cover up this middle piece, um, what I do is I just get another slopping piece. Just peel back all of the fibers here again. And sometimes I do snip it off here, like if it's up in here and it's gonna be a little harder to snip it once it's tied on, I'll just snip off like a little piece like that and just tie it right on there. And it fits in there perfectly. And then for this, I like to take my thread back just a tiny bit to about right there. And I'm gonna tie in this entire feather here. Well, not the entire thing, but we're just gonna wrap and pull back until we get a, a good amount 
so that we we think that that bead's gonna be sort of covered up and as i'm wrapping i kind of play with it here to keep the the fibers from getting trapped and just pull them back just keep pulling back there as you're going i'd say you probably get a good five six wraps in here And I think we're going to end it on that one. I'm going to tie that off. A few wraps. Cut it. And then at this point, you just want to grab all those fibers and really pull them back. And you're going to want to work your, your thread all the way back to where we started tying that in. And that, see, you can see that that really gives it a good cover on that bead. All right, so the next step here is to grab our zonker strip again. So we're gonna do basically the same thing that we did for the back end. Uh, I don't like it going hanging too far back here, just, just a little bit over the bead like that. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit longer than what we did in the back. So just create a nice little crease there to where you're going to want to tie this in and again I only throw about eight seven wraps on the to hold the, the zonker strip and all it needs is to hold it onto the hook it doesn't really it can move around if it moves around it just gives a little bit more movement <clears throat> and it's gonna be really secured in at the front anyway so it doesn't matter so once I give it a few good wraps there throw a few wraps in front and now we're gonna grab our chenille so we're gonna go with the brown flash crystal chenille here just pull a little bit of the, the sparkle off at the beginning it gives you a nice little tie-in point here and again throw a few wraps secure it to the, the hook shank here <clears throat> and now at this point I work the the thread upwards I fill in this little gap here if there's if there's any little gap just a little bit I'm not really worried about like the underbody of it since the chenille makes it look full and thick and then I give it like a few cross wraps on the the lead wire I don't like to waste a lot of thread doing all that so once I do that pull it up to the front here and then we go ahead and wrap our chenille and I don't like going all the way up to the, the, the top or up to the cone head with the chenille only because I still, we're still going to tie in some slopping and have to tie down that uh, rabbit. So we're going to cut it off there. <clears throat> and then I'll even do this, uh, pull back some of those chenille fibers, even though they're small. I'll pull them back and kind of tie them down so that there's a, a distinct gap between the cone and the, the chenille there. And we're going to pull the rabbit up and you're going to make a nice little crease again where it's going to end. So that looks good there. We'll tie that down with about three wraps. And then come in with the scissors, cut it off close. And then you're really gonna secure down that rabbit at this point. With some nice tight wraps. Okay. And uh, so now you could just throw the shopping on um, if you were going for a more natural look. Like I said though at the beginning, we're gonna we're gonna throw a little bit of um, crystal sh uh, flash here on. So I'm just gonna grab two fibers here. And then I like to have them go just, just a little bit back past the bead. Um, I do four strands on each side and to do that, I use two long strands, fold them over and match them up with each other. And then, so I tie those in on the first side with the ends all met up. Just a few wraps. That's all you need to, to secure this stuff down. And then I pull it to the other side and wrap it in. 
and then I just cut these sides. Uh, these are the closed ends, but you, you usually have enough to just cut them off even with the other side, and then it opens up the, the closed loop on those. <clears throat> so then you got that in, and then to finish this fly, you're gonna grab another piece of, I like to get a, a bigger piece of flopping that has like very fluffy uh, and longer, longer strands. Sometimes you might need to use like two feathers here. Um, this feather here looks pretty good. Might be able to get away with one. Just kind of depends on how bulky you want the, the front of the fly to be. Now for this, I like to peel off the bottom uh, fibers that I'm not going to use and actually tie this part in with the bottom first. So we're going to get a little piece like that with the bottom and cut off a little tie-in point and then go ahead and secure that to the little open section that you have up there and then just start wrapping and pulling those fibers back like we've been doing. And again, they're not all going to be pointing backwards at the beginning. Uh, you kind of got to work them backwards. This looks like it might be pretty good, just one feather on here. And you want to slowly work this up so that it's, you know, touching the, the back of the cone. And at that point, I like to give it a few extra wraps in there behind that so it's really tucked up against the cone head. And then few wraps of the thread will secure it in there cut off the the very tip end of whatever you didn't use and then peel it all back and then really secure it down here with a, a bunch of thread wraps <laughs> and then I most people say oh you want it to be as close to the cone head as possible but I like leaving or I like thread wrapping and building up like a, a good thing of thread there so that it starts coming out towards like the edge of the uh, the cone edge and then once you get all that thread in there you have like this small little gap that you can kind of tuck the uh, UV head cement down in there and that kind of closes the gap and makes it all like one smooth uh, flat piece so that's looking pretty good there everything's pushed back and then I when I'm finishing the fly on on the the front here I, I like to do like two whip finishes four or five turns each pull tight snip off the thread and now we'll go ahead and uh, get our toothpick and the UV head cement and kind of just pack it in there and it'll come out nice and flat and also when you put this UV head cement in you you harden it with the, the UV light it kind of pushes back those fibers so that they all stay backwards a lot of people are probably saying I need to get a rotary uh, vise I actually prefer to do it this way I feel like I can get it more to my liking because I like having it up close so that I can see what I'm doing not just rotating on the vise and have to like lean down I can just pull it up to my face here see where everything's going and then when I go to dry it I'm gonna throw it back in the vise and hit it with UV light I like to hold the, the UV light on there for quite a while actually because I feel like sometimes to hit it with a shot of UV for like 15 seconds and it's still like tacky so I'll even sit here for like a minute or two just kind of really letting it harden and then uh, that'll be the end of this pattern so I'm just going to finish that up here and then we'll show you the, the end product. Alright, so here is the fly that we just finished up. Uh, I know it looks sort of messy here, it's hard to, to see it on camera. Let me see if I can set it down here on the, the table and we can see it a little better. So that's a better look at it there and as you can see right there, you can see how that uh, UV head cement sort of fills that gap where that thread is. When you have the schloppen and your thread ties, or yeah, your thread wraps all the way packed up against that cone head, I don't like that because you can't really, it's hard to get that head cement down in there. So I like building up a little thread collar right after so that you can throw uh, a good bit of head cement right there. 
And I've never had any of these fall apart or anything like that. And you get that nice underbelly flash there in the front. And some of that bead will be exposed too. I feel like that's sometimes like a, a trigger. And then, like I said, the, the flash is optional. I really like natural patterns. So sometimes I won't even throw the flash in, but I feel like it, it goes with this brown one well. So that's the end of this one. Uh, let me know if there's anything else or any other flies that you'd like to, to see how I tie them. And uh, stay tuned for the next video. Peace.